So the first uh, tip, if you're writing something, you can write these down. These will be for, for your benefit, inshallah. Number one, you need to plan in advance. As we said, nobody expects to succeed at something if they didn't put any kind of plan. Yeah, time management is planning and then executing that plan efficiently and properly. This is the key to take advantage of Ramadan. Otherwise you find it, you had a lot of dreams and goals, but it passed you by and you didn't actually achieve any of those things that you wanted to achieve. Uh, number two, you need to do some calculation of how much ibadah time you actually have daily. So that means 24 hours minus how many hours you sleep, minus how many hours you have work or school, minus your obligations to your family or friends or others, whatever it might be. How many hours does that leave? Be realistic. So I have two hours a day, I have three hours a day that I can spend, divide it up. I'm gonna spend this many minutes or this much time reading some Quran. Then be very practical about scheduling it. When can I actually find half an hour quiet? Okay, right after Fajr, I could just stay, I could pull my handphone out, I could read those pages I want to read and enjoy and move on with the rest of my day, alhamdulillah. So be uh, uh, specific and precise. Set clear goals. Your objectives cannot be vague. I want to get closer to Allah by uh, better understanding the Quran and that's it. What does that mean? That means I want to read a book about tafsir. That book about tafsir has this many pages. How many pages do I need to read each day? 10 pages a day. How long will it take me to read those 10 pages? 20 minutes. Where am I going to find those 20 minutes? Right uh, before iftar, I'm going to sit for 20 minutes and read. Finished. So you schedule it and you be practical about it. The way you do for your studies, the way you do for business and work once you get into that area of life. Yeah, so you need number four to allocate, allocate the time for the goal. You have a goal, you set that time, then you be stingy with your time because you'll have a million distractions. Yeah, one thing many of us need to do is detox from our socializing and social networking. So if you find that that's eating all that extra time you have, then you need to cut it down. Well, number five, utilize the early hours of the morning. There is a special barakah in the night. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it in a special way and the Prophet sallallahu talked about it in a special way. We are talking about those few hours right before Fajr. So if you cannot use all of them, at least you're getting up half an hour, 45 minutes. You're already doing that inshallah because you're going to have suhoor and so on. Try to utilize some of that time to pray a couple rak'ahs, to read a few pages of Quran. You will find that time is more blessed and special and different than any other time of the day for doing those kind of ibadat. Number six, stay healthy. So the reality is if you're not drinking enough water, you're not getting enough sleep, then by the middle of Ramadan, suddenly you're uh, You're just uh, barely holding on to life. Yeah. So the reality is if we're not used to it, that's why the Prophet Wasallam, what would he do in Sha'ban? He used to fast a lot in Sha'ban. Why? Preparation. So you need to do your best to try to stabilize and balance and make sure that you don't exhaust yourself because otherwise a large portion of the month passes and you weren't able to take advantage of it. Number seven, dedicate some time daily for Quran. Quran doesn't mean only reading it in Arabic. It means also pondering, reflecting. Some people get caught up about how many times am I going to finish Quran. The reality is it's okay if you finish it only one time or not even one time. As long as it has a lasting effect and brings you closer to Allah. So if you spent that half an hour reading two pages rather than 20 pages, but you understood it deeply, you tried to practice it in your life, that could be better for you. Yeah, Allah only knows. Number eight, avoid multitasking. You're trying to listen to that Quran for 10, 15 minutes while scanning the Facebook or the WhatsApp messages and that doesn't work. That's not going to be very beneficial or bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number nine, you try to fast from excessive socializing. So that means whether meeting people face to face or all the online socializing. Because you'll find that that will take up so much of your time and a lot of it, there's negativity, there are things that just ruin the spirituality. So if you're using social media to send a good reminder, to get closer to Allah, to read a good reminder that someone's sharing, that could be a part of your program. But if it's not, then try to minimize it, try to reduce as much as you can. Number 10, try to schedule some halaqa time. Either family, if you're living with family or roommates, housemates, friends, get together and choose something that you will do that will bring you closer together and bring you closer to Allah. Yeah, if you have children, you can have your children read a story about one of the Sahaba or the Prophets and then you all discuss it. 